right. Hello, hello. Good morning and welcome to In Between Hairstylist by uh, If Hair Pro. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Sandy uh, Roberts. And if you don't know Sandy, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Sandy. Sandy it was licensed in 1988. She is a salon owner since 1992. Two, and it is uh, her salon is called Salon on Six in Edmonton, Canada. She's a Crystal Lifetime member, uh, master judge with Canada's Master Judge Program. She also has won many hands-on hair styling awards, including two gold medals for color at, at international world level in Chicago, in Paris, France. And uh, she's the most, she has the most trophy awarded to an individual in Canada. And I totally believe it because I have proof I saw the photo. <laughs> and I knew about it because I've known her for a very long time. She's working as an educator uh, and a platform artist. She also has trained 12 new new talent for competition and they have won first place uh, for cut and color competition. That's amazing. She also likes to volunteer at times to educate at different facility, training facility and mentoring student around Edmonton. So let's go get her and her name. You don't want to forget. She's Sandy Roberts from Edmonton. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. And I'm happy you're here. I'm Come happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you again. It's always yeah. a pleasure talking to you. Uh, same. And um, part one was very successful. And we're going to do a continuation of part one. So we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about um, competition. So let me throw this at you. Let's say I'm a new uh, comer and I want to compete. I don't know what to do, where to go, which door I should knock on. And hopefully now, like, you know, things will start happening again and we're going to start seeing more competition. But what should I do? Well, you should think about what type of competition you're interested in doing. If you're interested in doing live, hands-on competition that's timed in front of an audience. There isn't a lot of that being offered right now, but we're working on it. And if anybody out there in your group of people has any ideas on how we can do this, please let me know. Um, but <laughs> also too, there's a lot of photo competitions that are available. Now, go. there are a couple of good um, places you could um, maybe research the Allied Beauty Association has a long history of competition in Canada. And even though there isn't a lot happening right now because they are a live trade, trade show uh, co company and there aren't a lot of live trade shows happening right now, but they still, I think, I believe right at the moment, they do have one online competition for barbering. And uh, I so, yeah. if, I'm, I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think it's that. for students. I think, but I might be wrong. It could be for any level. But uh, if you go to Allied Beauty Association to their webpage or their Facebook page, start there uh, for that sort of a little bit of information. Go to your school that you took your training from. The, they would more likely have more uh, contact with uh, diverse members of your community and would at least know somebody who would be in competition or go to your local distributorship and talk yeah. to them. Distributors uh, have their finger on the pulse of what's happening in your neighborhoods or your communities. And and they would, uh, if and a lot of the, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but some of the manufacturers actually offer some competitions online as well. Okay. So uh, the distributors would know about those. Um, and then also the um, OMC, the Organisation Mondiale Coiffure, is the World Hairdressing Association that offers the World Championships. That is uh, more advanced competing, of course. And at the moment it is all um, photo work. Um, the, it's 
kind of putting your cart a little bit ahead of your horse if you if you think you want to start competing and you go there and go i want to answer this right uh, no, i mean no. maybe you have been doing a lot of work and doing a lot of uh investigating on their web page they have a lot of inspirational stuff but don't if you go there first and you look at those pictures don't get scared away by the quality of the work and the mm -hmm. artistry of the work because that's extremely advanced competition work it's what you can aspire to do once you start with your um, more local more regional or uh, manufacturer competitions um, there are, there's so many different ways of going about it and um, in preparation for this I reached out to some of my long-term competitor friends and uh, asked them what they felt they got out of competing and if they yeah. felt it was still important every single one of them said that yes it's important and what they got out of it was essentially the ability to perfect their craft exactly. and a reason to try new and different things and it gives you goal setting because if you don't have a goal to try it i mean in the back of your head you may be thinking yeah i'd like to try that one day but unless you have an actual date to aim towards for practicing and getting ready for it, it can get put to the back burner, especially if you're a busy stylist or or if you're a beginning stylist, and you have to work a part time job to pay your bills or if you're yeah. secluded because of pandemic. I mean, there's so many different reasons why yeah. it can be put to the back burner. So find a competition, find a date, do your um, homework and research the rules, read the rules very carefully. What is expected of you? Yeah. What is expected of the end result of your competition. And then if you feel that, you know, I need somebody to talk to about this, then start, you know, looking around, uh, go to your school, go to your distributors, go to your, if you know a competitor, to us, to us, right? <laughs> I said, call us, yeah. To us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Call us, give us a call. Like, you know, just reach out because those of us that are, have been in the competition arena a lot like Isabel she is huge too she's done lots of stuff in the industry and so supportive of it thank you very much um but the you know there's everybody wants to still see it happen now the, things constantly evolve there has to be new ways of doing it maybe a hybrid a photo combination live I mean mm -hmm. there are so many different ways that you can go about having hair competitions and hair competitions raise your level of skill by making you work work on something, uh, perfecting a technique of some sort, as well as raise your ability to parlay your skills into a, a better career, right? right? There's some good examples out there of people that are, have done a lot of competition then have been able to use it in ways to be more successful and get more recognized. You know, if, you, if you're aspiring to be an educator with a manufacturer, right. I mean, you can, definitely even even if you don't win you say hey you know what i've competed right yes. it helps if you've got yes. trophies and you could say but you know it just shows that you are contributing a little bit more to your self-improvement i agree right? with you 100 percent yeah. yeah so so true now um how do you go about prepping your your mannequin head or well <laughs> that can, it depends on the competition right and if you're getting ready for a live competition or a photo competition there again i mean but i brought some of my friends with me today my competitor <laughs> friends <laughs> that i've used in the past for different things yeah. for preparation yeah. um, what i start with depending on the competition i'm going for you you need to have a very good quality head of hair, whether that be a mannequin because you're shooting your mannequin or whether it be a wig because you're going to put it on a live model for a okay. photo, right? right? Most of the winning competition photo work that you see is not the model's own hair. No. Those are wigs, right? So that you can make the perfect, perfect head of hair, whatever the category may be, whether it be avant-garde or, or commercial cut right mm -hmm. whatever it may be you need to have the perfect perfect hair and then the perfect perfect model to put it on now that doesn't happen very often <laughs> where you get like the most beautiful the striking model of whatever yeah. you're looking for for look with the perfect hair that for the look you want yeah. so enter the wigs this and uh, you know one important point is sometimes you would you would see someone and you think that she's go she's going to picture really well 
And then you get her in front of the screen and it's not happening. Nope. Yeah. Uh, being pretty is totally subjective. Being photogenic is not. Yeah. <laughs> and then you will get somebody that you see on the street. And I, I know you've done that. Sometimes you've gone to the mall and you've picked up, you know, models in the mall and brought them to the ABA, do them up. And then you just won competition. So sometimes there's somebody that will have a little something that is charming, right? That will capture your eyes. And that's what's important when you're doing um, competition, period. It could, you know, and when you put makeup on somebody, it changes the person totally. So absolutely. You got to use the whole uh, gamut of your uh, tools to create your overall look. It isn't just the hair. No. It's the makeup, the hair, the outfit, the lighting. everything, everything right. needs to tie together to make a very pretty picture, whether that be on a live model or in a photo. It's yeah. the end result picture. Now photos, you can definitely, you've got more, a little more leeway in posing and holding still and getting the exact right angle. And that's the only angle that the, the viewer is going to see. So, cause sometimes like you're saying with some people they're very beautiful people and you know from the front the hair looks really good or or you know they present but they go sideways and their profile is terrible <laughs> you know? right. but in a photo you can still work with that yeah live you have to be a little more conscious of the whole overall presentation right good right. good point your mm -hmm. overall presentation is one of the most important thing in competition just don't think that you do the head and you do the hair and that's about it no 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 the clothes ornament everything all comes together yeah right? yeah it's it's like putting together a really nice flower arrangement right you, you have to have it all balanced and colors have to work together and not too busy not not too boring <laughs> you know it's a combination of everything that comes together to to create a, a really uh, a captivating image whether it be live or or photo you know because it has to catch the viewer's eye yeah. in some way or another and whether it be a really interesting looking model or you know that makes them look first right you could catch their eye because if in competition there is lots of other people out there trying to catch the judge's eye so right. you have to come up with something that's going to catch their eye and then they will that will draw them in and then they will look more closely at the technicality of it yeah right do you like, have some example for us to you know to show us like um I the mannequins you you want mannequins or wigs <laughs> first what do you want first <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's say we're doing we're talking about um photographic competition okay photographic competition then you need to come up with a vision, come up with an idea and, and pick a category, uh, whether it be commercial cut or avant-garde or fantasy or men's or ladies. Go through the competitions that you're thinking about, choose yeah. something. And I would recommend just pick one, just pick one to start, to right? Start. And perfect it. And then as we were saying earlier, mostly the categories that you're looking at is done on w wig work. So you need a really good wig. The, this is the wig of choice for me. There's probably lots out there. It's a lace front wig. Uh, I'm turning the wrong way. There we go. It's a lace front wig yeah. that is woven really, really nicely. It's very natural looking. Uh, and the color is a good base yeah. to do anything on. It's a pretty good length. It's just uh, razor cut, so the ends are very smooth. You could use it for long hair styling if you want it. You could yeah. use it for cutting. You could use it for anything. It's got a lot of hair to it and a nice color base that you can darken or put funky colors in or whatever without having to pre-lighten. Like, don't get a wig or a mannequin that the hair's too dark and you've got to lighten it because this right. hair's already been over-treated. Right. So if you pick a dark haired mannequin go I want to make a blonde pick a blonde mannequin because you have that option <laughs> right the mannequin hairs I mean in in school or practicing go ahead and play with it if you want yeah. but for competition work get the best that you possibly can uh, to your 
you know, budget and to your av availability to do the best job that you want. And then you go out and find a model that's mm -hmm. going to work with that look that you want. If you're doing something really streetwise and edgy, then you want to find a model that works with that, right? If you're doing something really soft and and angelic, then you go want to find a model that works with that too, right? Mm -hmm. You you want it like uh, Isabel was saying, you want the whole image to work. You don't want it to clash in any way. Yeah. Anne is here and she's watching us. Hi, she Anne. <laughs> she, now there's a former Canadian champion. She yeah. won uh, the Canadian championship. I don't remember what year. Maybe you could type it in there, Anne, and let Isabel know when you won the Canadian championship. Her and I have traveled the world over competing together. Yeah. And uh, she is one of the most precise stylists and when it comes to technical work uh she's trained in europe she's been all you know she's she's one of my best bestest buddies I oh, know. Yeah, thanks for joining she's she's answering 2015 2015 yes. yes and she wants to know she has a question so okay. she wants to know what is the name of the wig oh the wig. well this is from morella Simentelli's collection she does a lot of wigs with competition in mind. Morella Simentelli is also a former competitor. Now, there's a very good example yeah. of someone who's parlayed their, their um, career and their competition into even more successful career. She um, is very successful hairstylist, has done I don't even know how many you'd have to ask her different types of competitions. She's won in Italy. She's won all over the world. Yeah, and I'm she sure. sees the need for mm -hmm. competitors to have the quality to, in order to recreate or to do what you want to do in the competition world. So that one is a Morella Simentelli wig. Um, I'm sure there's other ones out there. I just know Morella and I like to support Canadian and, uh, Absolutely. you know, she's, yeah. I'm not sure where she gets the made. I, I, you'd have to talk to her, but she's Canadian distributor of this and, um, and a really pro -com competitive person. So, you know, I support, uh, you know, that, just support that <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. because so, the wig is also very very good it's so i have a couple more questions she said how do i reach out to her so on uh, uh, facebook would facebook. be my first fit face you know would be my first place to go because i don't know like i contact her always through messenger okay. so that's Facebook, you know. I'm sure I could look up her email, but I don't know what she is offhand. I mean, Facebook is a real, really good resource for con reconnecting with people, yes. I think, you know. And the other question is, is the wig pre-cut? The wig, this particular wig is not. It's uh, razor cut. It's, uh, the, this is the front, it's got the lace fronts. And uh, it's about, I don't know, from the nape, probably that well it's that long however long that you might think that is yes. it's uh just the shortest mm -hmm. layers the shoulders i think yeah it looks like it's probably about 12 inches all the way around looks like it's about 12 inches uniform with razor cut edges so you can cut it thin it style it design it any way you wish for your competition work right and that's the whole point of it is is it's a blank canvas the color mm -hmm. is light enough to color any way you want. The length is long enough to cut into a shape that you want. Very realistic. I, I like working with these wigs, but I, I don't do a lot of photo work, but I do talk to people who do photo work yeah. and uh, that mostly it's wigs. I mean, unless the, unless the competition specifically says, I think one of the color makeover ones, you have to use the same model, right? Um, or a live model and their hair. But for most of the competitions, it's wigs because you can perfect them. And it's you're not so time sensitive of making a live person sit there while you fiddle, right? Yeah. So the question is, is it human hair? Yes, yes. it is. Well, to, be, to be able to color it for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You can 100%. color it, treat it like human hair. Now, I like I said, I don't make the things, so it it doesn't look and feel to me like it's yak because some of the other wigs or and mannequins do have yak hair, um, which 
acts mostly like human hair. It's a little stiffer, but it really responds very similarly um, to, you know, as human hair would. So um, honestly, I <laughs> haven't asked because all I want to know is can I color it? Can I cut it? Right? Yes. Yeah. The answer's yes to both. So Anne says, do you give classes on how to pre-cut a wig? Um, I could. Yeah, we could um, do that later. Anne actually would probably be also a very good resource on how to pre-cut a wig uh, if you're out here in Alberta, because, you know, one person can only do so much. Then we've got quite a pool of really talented competitors in this country. And most of us, especially us old babes that have been around a while, we, we're at the stage where, yeah, it's still fun to compete, but we really want to encourage competition for young people because we see the value in it. We see how much more it improves your career and gives you goals to set and, and opportunities to shine. And, uh, you know, you need that in this career. You need to be able to stand out uh, from the crowd of hairdressers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. She says, yay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yay. Awesome. So now, uh, how about mannequin head? Like, let's say we do uh, the ABA. We want to compete. Okay. ABA. ABA or even OMC, that's all on mannequin head work too, right? So right. Um, you can use a wig on a mannequin head if you want, if you don't want to be completely cutting and destroying all their hair and practicing. Um, cost wise it's very similar so whatever you choose okay. to do you just don't get as much waste on mannequin heads right like yes. the whole head right but uh, but uh, the mannequin head of choice and recommended for pretty much all competitions is from pivot point so this is a pivot point mannequin comes in a box where am i comes in a box like this yes this one is sophia she is a the mannequin of choice for most competitors. Very popular, yeah. Yeah, so she comes. Popular. You bring her out of the box like this. She's in a bag. Yes. Take the bag off and to cut off. Oops. Sure, take that off. There we go. Cut off all the strings and tags. You can see that this hair is she very has light. light pretty face as well. Very yes. thick. Most likely you will have to thin it and cut it. Yes. But remember, it's a mannequin that doesn't grow back. <laughs> and the hairlines on them are mannequin hairlines. Yes. So when you're coloring, be extremely careful because they also stain. Okay. They're not, the, the color, it's hard to get off. So, you know, you got to, when you are color, I usually put masking tape around the edge. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or painter's tape, anything. But, you know, it takes a little time to prep them. Also do when you first get them out of the box, one of the things that you really should do is a really deep cleanse uh, uh, shampoo, you know, with heat. So to lather it up like you're doing an old lady that has had her hair set in a, you know, beehive for a whole month and you've got to brush it out and get yeah. rid of all that build up hairspray because That's it's been treated for for storage, it's been treated for travel, but also remember this hair, it has also been treated. So yes, you can color it darker, but bleaching can make it very fragile. Right. Right, but because it's so light, like you can tone this. I've toned these to like, look like my hair, right? With the right toner, Okay. Right? so to get them really light so that's the sophia most common used competition mannequin not overly long but long enough for competition work right so if you're wanting to do bridal work or or long work that then, then uh, go to uh, one of the other mannequins here's one that's longer this is ingrid Ooh, where are we this is ingrid she's got much longer hair this was one that was I pre-colored to use in uh, oh. for a, a class at a school. Yeah. So for a long hair competition, it's nice to do the root smudge like this. Exactly. Because it gives you some depth. And then you when you lay, work with it and do movements and stuff, yes. it shows up really yeah. nice. And if you're doing very specific movements yes. in the hair, then you color 
in. Where are we? I don't know where my camera is on this. I got a new iPad, so I'm struggling. Um, color in specifically where you want to enhance your specific movements, right? Where are we? There we go. Yes. Right. So you, you go in and it's like using a, a pen on your design. You create your design first with the idea of color in mind, but you got to do the cut first. Don't color it before you cut it. Okay. Right. You want to get that cut perfected first, and then it probably will take you a good three or four mannequins to get a, uh, a yeah. mannequin ready for a competition look. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so a question. So this one is Ingrid, actually. This was an Ingrid. This was the long-term one. Ing we want to work with Ingrid and Sophia. Sophia. Those are two good ones to start with. Yes. If you go on the Pivot Point Canada website and look at competition mannequins, you can see them all. There we go. So right. that was one of the questions is where do you think is good place to get them? From? Pivot Point. The Pivot Point. Here's And here's... Uh, here is, I believe, this is Antonio. So someone would go. Uh, Antonio has a taper on one side and a fade on the other side. This was another. I, I cut this in. He comes with long hair, very much like, like um, uh, Sophia. Yes. So, and, but very nice thick hair that you can do a lot with. It hasn't been colored um the you can you know pre-lighten this a little bit here's here's a good example of something that you comes dark and but they do make blonde ones go on just go on the pivot point um canada website okay. and check out competition mannequins okay and they've got they've actually got um mannequins that have ethnic hair like the really naturally curly naturally kinky hair too so if you want the to practice beards, some of the guys yeah, that the beards. beards yeah no well, they come with the piece beards that sort of thing if you go on the website there is tons of of uh, you know inspirational ideas there for for mannequins definitely okay. for pivot point and those and you also have to check especially if you're doing omc which mannequins are accepted in their competition yeah, because there's tons of manufacturers out there that make mannequins, but not all of them are accepted at that level of competition. And Pivot Point is the uh, number one uh, there. I think there's a couple of other ones, too. But there again, this one's here in Canada. I like to support Canada. And actually, Pivot Point Canada head office is in Edmonton. So, yay, Edmonton. <laughs> we have something out here. <laughs> <laughs> so now for for photo uh, photography uh, photos, uh, what do you need to know how to choose them? Like, is there uh, something in particular you need to look for? Is there a name that this one that you showed us? Um, did it have a for name? photo work? Yeah, for, for mannequin work. Yeah. Yes, these ones are the best. Now you can they come with get you all ready here they come with some makeup on Where okay the heck is my camera yeah you got it that it's can right be there. all removed with fingernail polish remover is that right yeah take fingernail oh. polish remover you can remove all of that makeup remove those funny looking little eyelashes yeah. that are in a funny spot i just take a tweezer and, and pull them off because you usually want to replace them and open that eye up more and you want to design the makeup to suit your image. Okay. Right. So they come like this for those, you know, for students or when you're just doing basic work or whatever, but for artistic finished work, like if you go on the OMC website and look at some of that very creative makeup uh, work that's done on mannequins, most of them are on these mannequins because their faces are so this way, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this way. So nice and uh, smooth. Okay. Yeah. So very, yeah. very important information. So if you want to remove their makeup and redo it, you, you, use, you use nail polish remover, you remove it, and then you would do the makeup fresh but what kind of makeup do you use do you use like i just use regular makeup oh yeah i do it's like easy that. to wipe off I... easy to clean um i know some people use latex paint some people use right. nail polishes some whatever um i find that 
first off, it doesn't blend as naturally as I would like. Okay. I just use regular okay. makeup and I find it stays on very well. Okay. Too. I mean, I have done up the makeup here in Edmonton, shoved my mannequin in a suitcase and taken it to Toronto for a competition. It comes out and it's still pretty good. Okay. Right. So, okay. yeah, just, you, I, I just use regular makeup. Eye pencils. I do use a lot of eye pencils and powders. And you just have to find one that will stick to the, because the, the material of these uh, mannequins isn't hard and shiny. It's almost got a flesh-like feel to it. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So makeup will, will adhere to it very well, but it's much easier to clean off than latex paint or, or fingernail polish. You know, you have to be a lot more steady handed and it leaves, I don't know, if you're looking for a real strong avant-garde look or fantasy look, sure, use whatever you want. Right, you, you you just play with what you think because it, it's a mannequin. Wash it off yeah. after. And apparently, you're supposed to spray it with hairspray to set it. Right? Be careful with that because yes. sometimes it can leave a shiny finish. Okay. And then you look like you've been eating glazed donuts. You know, it doesn't have right. a doesn't have a natural finish. Yeah. Yeah, and like, what do you need to set it for? They're not going out partying. Okay. They're just sitting on the mannequin stand looking pretty, right? Right. Okay. So sometimes with hairspray, you can play around with it if you really feel that you want to set it so that it's not going to move forever and ever because she's going to be kissing somebody. I don't know. Then, <laughs> but I I never have. I never have okay. because I, I just found it left the the finish too shiny. It looked okay. too phony. And then, and what you're trying to replicate here is something that looks like a real person. Okay. Right? Okay. So yeah. um, not a doll with a shiny porcelain face. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and unless, good. of course, and who knows fashions, how fashions change, it could next year be really dewy and shiny, the whole overall look. Right? Ooh. And if that's what the look is in fashion, then go for it. But I, I find that it's not necessary. You, you're not, it doesn't need to be set for any particular reason. They're not, like I say, they're not going out partying. They're just sitting there looking pretty and okay. that shiny finish. I've just never really liked it. I don't think it looks very natural, but play with it. If you don't like it, take your fingernail polish and take it off. Or wash yeah, it off. I, I think <laughs> it's a personal choice. I think. Like, Absolutely. It is. Right? So Oh, that's good. So let's recap because this is all the time it, we've we've had oh today. Oh my God, the time goes by so fast when we're having fun. I know, I know. Oh gosh, we're gonna have to do part three now. <laughs> <laughs> oh darn! Oh darn! <laughs> no, maybe I'll get some of my real friends to come next time. <laughs> <laughs> so but to recap of what we've learned today is okay so to get our mannequin head we want to use um pivot point pivot point you will find them in edmonton online uh, too yeah online. just online everything's online yeah go pivot point canada and you will find it now when you get your mannequin head what you want to do is you want to wash your mannequin head to just get rid of like whatever like just and they're really thick which is good right. um you know because it gives you lots to work with but you'll probably need to thin them out and, and you know you'll you'll whatever your desired end result is right exactly okay good so you want to you know prep your mannequin head that way is mm -hmm. there anything more that we should add to that or um you know what again it just depends on what you're trying to do if your end result is your really design that's right what your design is like if you're looking for a real sleek polished finish you probably really need to condition it make it limp if you want lots of volume and fullness maybe not so treat it like real hair like okay. you would real hair yeah good advice okay and then if you decide that you want to change the makeup you use nail pollen uh, nail nail polish remover remove it and then apply a new uh makeup to your babe and then here we go you're set to start something do, do, do the makeup but the, that's the very last thing you do exactly do yeah because you know you're going to be doing lots of work around there you know i usually tape a plastic uh it's bag right over then. top of their face and around their shoulders like i'll tape on plastic so that when i'm coloring something doesn't accidentally drop on there right you know <laughs> to pre because it isn't human it's 
plastic. So if you do get color on it, it might not come off. Like, here, I'll show you. This girl here has got a little, oh, you probably can't even see it. Get away. Move it there. Down. Here. It's got some, that's color. Oh. That I couldn't get off. <laughs> yeah. But she's just a demo mannequin for class students. So <laughs> I don't worry about it so much. I use it as demonstration. This is what not to do. <laughs> because I didn't didn't cover her properly when I was oh, okay, coloring okay. up. Oh, right. my God. Well, thank you. Thank you a million for your information, Sandy. It's just, it's good. I think it's going to be helping a lot of people that are you know thinking and don't have a clue what to do for competition maybe it's competitors at, that um, are not doing things they need to fine tune their skills and they just needed that extra information to be able to just you know work better kind right. of right oh for sure yeah you know any i i learn so much from students because they, they, they think freely. Right. They're not, you know, biased because they haven't done it a million times. I know that's not going to work, right? So if you can learn even one little tidbit, if it helps you, great. I'm happy. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, again, thanks again for your time and spending it in between hairstylists. My goal is to create more of these kind of talk. It's important to exchange ideas, you know, helping each other. And, you know, I'm so glad that you are part of it. And thank thank you. you. I'm so glad to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There we go, people. We this is concluding our uh, talk at In Between Hairstylists. If Hair Pro, my name is Isabel Filion. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.